Hello everyone, this is a problem that my Calculus 1 students have asked me to talk about. So we're learning the early stages of derivatives, limits, things like that. So we're going to use a graph here to estimate the limit as theta tends towards zero of sine of 5 theta over theta. Now this is pretty important. Theta is measured in radians. All angles will be in radians in this class unless otherwise specified. And that's, that's true always. Usually everything, once you learn radians, is in terms of radians unless the problem specifically states you're using another unit of measure. <clears throat> so first off, make sure your calculator, when you graph this, is in radian mode. Otherwise, the picture won't look right. So as somebody who's been doing math a really long time, the first thing that I would try to do is plug in zero for theta and just see what happens. Well, the big problem occurs here is that this function is undefined when theta is zero, as you can tell. So there's going to be a hole when theta is zero in the picture or an asymptote, but we want to see as we get close to zero what the output of this function behaves like. Does it go to one point? Is it asymptotic um, to a, a vertical line and it goes off to infinity or negative infinity or something like that? The first thing you do is you take out your trusty calculator and you graph it. So uh, let's check my mode. I'm in radian mode. And here's my function, sine of 5 theta over theta. And then I graph it. So you can see that my graph looks like it's tending towards one place. As I come close to theta equals 0, I'm looking to where these values are going towards. So it looks like it's going towards whatever this value is. So there's a variety of ways that we can figure it out. If we hit the trace key, because my vertical axis is in the center, notice if I go to my window, I just did minus three to three, minus three to seven. I tried minus three to three, minus three to three, but I needed to stretch it up so I could see the top. The top was cut. So when I hit trace, it goes right to the center of the screen. And notice at x equals 0, y equals nothing, <laughs> right? Because we knew that already. So I'm going to tab just to the side, and I see that when I'm really close to 0 here, I'm about at 4.91. And when I tab this direction, I'm at 4.91 or 92. It looks like I'm very close to y equals 5. So that is my limit. Now what I'm going to do before I make that decision is zoom in right at that spot. So I hit zoom, zoom in right there. That's where it's going to zoom in and hit enter. I want to make sure that I'm right about that because 491 isn't necessarily close, it's close enough to 5. We want to get the 499 thing. So I hit trace and let's do x equals 0. Tab just to the right and notice now it's 4.99. Tab just to the left, 4.99. Okay, let's zoom in one more time. Zoom, zoom in right at that spot. Here we are, last time for zooming in, and we should have a pretty good idea of what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to do my trace when x equals 0. Go just to the right. Now look how good it is, 4.999. And then tab just over to the left. 4.9999. Okay, good. Um, hopefully you followed what I did with my calculator. I mean, I'm just basically using the trace key, using the zoom key, going in and out. You can hit zoom in, <clears throat> and that will zoom into where you can see this little cursor. It'll zoom the center of the screen right where that cursor is. So I was putting it exactly where the spot that looked interesting to me. Now notice since the graphing calculator is just a glorified light bright, not always will you see the hole where there's supposed to be a hole. So even though this is a very sophisticated piece of machinery, it still doesn't have everything that we want. We have to also know that this is undefined here, so there should be a hole right there. All right. But in the end, then, we're going to write the limit as theta goes to zero of the function sine of 5x, or sorry, 5 theta over theta, 
is equal to five. 